Hello and welcome to this Sophistic tutorial. My name is Florian Hemetsberger and today I'm going to show you how to use design elements in Sophistic based on my little example right here. As you can see, it consists of both quad elements as well as a beam element in the middle. So what we want to use the design elements for is to actually combine and receive results for both quad elements as well as the beam element together. We can then also do a design based on a cross section that we uh, reference the design element on. By the way, right here you can see the reference of the design element. And right here you can see the results that we get for both the uh, calculation of quad elements as well as the beam element. So let's jump right into it. So right here you can see my system which consists both of quad elements as well as of beam elements. And as you can see right here I actually did most of the calculation with standard SSD tasks for example the linear analysis of the system and right here I used a Teddy task to create my design element. Right here you can see we used the program dcreator for it. By pressing F1 the manual for dcreator opens up and the first thing we want uh, we actually want to input right here you can see uh, the output that I defined as well as a D delete. I will get into that later on. The first command we want to take a look at is DSLM. These are the general settings for my design element. And the first one is the number of the design element. Right here you can choose uh, any number that you desire in that case. But if you select a number right here that has a coexistent structural line in the system and you do not define the geometry of uh, your design element later on, it will actually take the coexisting structural line and create the design element along it. With NCS we can choose a primary cross section. This primary cross section is then used in the next command for example for the reference of the integrated forces. What this means is what uh, I will show you later on. With NCS we also give the design element a cross section for the design procedure later on. So let's take a look at the cross section right here. As you can see right here, this is my design element cross section that I defined. It has exactly the uh, diameters of my quad elements and down here the diameters of my beam element. I also added some reinforcement so we can see later on uh, what the design procedure looks like. Here you can see the main system again and let's get back into it. So with the primary cross section we can define a cross section for the design element. We can also use an NCS2, not only an NCS. And what this does it is it assigns the beginning of the cross section to NCS and the end of the cross section to another cross section NCS2. Between those two cross sections the program will linearly interpolate. Let's take a look at the reference generation of the system. As you can see right here we have three options for the reference. I have the gravity center of the cross section, the geometric center of the sectional cuts and the reference axis of the design element. So as I mentioned before uh, I defined a cross section. When I use SC meaning the gravity center of the cross section it will actually take our, uh, our point zero and reference the gravity center of the cross section to it. Which means that with SC the distance from the reference is that distance. Let's take a look how that works. So let's change that to SC. And let's simply calculate the design element. I defined a wing graph down here with the information that I actually want to take a look at. As you can see right here, this is our point zero and right here is our design element. So point zero and the 
center of gravity of our design element. Let's go back to the design element and let's change it to reference. When we calculate it right now, we force the program to use, to use the, our point zero right here as the reference, which means that the center of gravity is placed in the point zero. You can also see here our point zero and the design element are in the same uh, point right here, which means that the design element will be placed like this. Let's go back and let's actually change it to the geometric center. When we run it like that, it will be placed, calculated based on the geometric center of both quads. So both the quad elements as well as the beam element will be geometrically considered. And right now we actually get the right placement for the design element. It fits perfectly where the real quad elements as well as the beam element are placed in the system. So for this situation, this is the right version to use. So the other functionality that we added to the design element general description right here is hdiff. So these are the distances that the design elements are placed along the, defi the defined geometry. What does this mean? Let's take a look again into our wing graph right here. And right here, I have the general system. When I click onto design elements, you can see every 0.2 meters, one design section is placed and integrated results are generated for every single one of these cross sections that are placed along this, this design element. So let's take a look at the geometric definition of the design element. We have a multitude of options right here. We can either use a structural line, an existing beam, a line element, a, a line that we define ourselves or an axis. I chose a structural line right here. And as you can see for the structural line, I also have to assign an ID. So when I come back to my Sophie Plus right here and I click at this structural line right here, you can see this is number one. So I actually defined the geometry for, for this design element 101 for the structural line number one. It would have the same effect if I don't use the geometry and instead I use a uh, number one instead of 101. It would do the same thing because it realizes oh, the geometry is not defined. I can use structural line number one. But let's not do this for now. The next step is to select the elements that we want results for in our design element. In this case, I decided to use the box, which means a bounding box. I could give it a minimum and maximum for Y and Z, but as the preset is 1 million and there are no other elements in my system, I decided to just leave it empty and use the standard values. I could also select um, my elements with groups with a section bounding box uh, with a cross-section bounding box, which in this case means when I take a look uh, from the left top to the right bottom, it would take the most maximum values right here. And it will create a box. I can assign beam elements to it and structural areas. Of course, I can also reference all of uh, the quad sections and groups with numbers right here. The next step is to define where we want to get results predefined with DSLC. So we can uh, define it from start, end and middle. And with middle, it's important to use positive and or negative values. We also have the option to already uh, define a type of section in main bending, as well as a type of section in the transfer transverse bend bending. Right here, I defined it for the middle. 
that I want to have a standard section right here as well as a transverse bedding se shear section, uh, main and cross shear section right uh, at the start and the end with a distance right here. Okay, so now the last step that we actually need to do is to define load cases which should be considered for this design element. I just chose one and two because those are the only ones I have. And then we are actually already ready. We defined our design element, by the way, I almost forgot. The delete just designs all the de uh, deletes all design elements. I do this just for changes so I don't have double design elements. So I can take a look at the superposition and as you can see, the standard sophistic task actually supports the design elements. It creates results. And with these results, I can take a look at my, I have to calculate it, of course. I can take a look at my ULS and SLS design, which are also standard tasks provided uh, by Sophistic. As you can see, by the way, those are these tasks down here for design elements. Take a look at the ULS. As you can see, the combinations are already done. And according to code, I just do the calculation for ULS right now. As well as the calculation for SLS. And now we can take a look what happened again in my design elements. I can see the normal structure. I can see where the cross section is placed. Again, now in the cross section view, the cross section is placed right here of the design element. Let's take a look at the results that we get. So right here, I have a bending moment MY for the combined quads and beam elements. The same for shear and the longitudinal reinforcement to ULS and SLS. So as you can see, the design elements are actually rather easy to handle. And I hope this was informative for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send us an email via info at sophistic.de and visit our website at sophistic.com. Goodbye.